Today, I'm going to show you from start to finish how I painted this medieval-inspired portrait of Dave Gahan. I'm also going to show you how I experimented with two different approaches, followed an old master painting method with completely non-toxic paints, and explain how you can use these methods to achieve this old-world look yourself. So, let's get right to it. For this first step, I'm using a cat's tongue brush and raw umber paint to go over my charcoal drawing. The thin layer of paint helps lock the charcoal in place and creates an outline that's no longer going to move or smudge when I apply paint over it. This is especially useful if you've spent a lot of time creating an accurate drawing and don't want to lose any of your details. My logic here is, I like to have each layer of the painting process contribute something to the final image and take the workload off from the preceding layers. So when I have my outline in place, I no longer have to worry about losing my sketch and can focus my energy on other things like color and shading. In this portrait we have a fairly simple, even skin tone without much variation in value, but nevertheless, I'm going to use an old master technique to block in a translucent skin color. To start off with this painting, I'm going to use the following colors you see on my palette, walnut oil and thinner for my medium, and these filbert brushes. Now, I want to explain a little about what I'm doing here, and the paint I'm mixing for the skin tone. This portrait is part of a few paintings I'm doing to get practice and experiment with certain painting techniques, specifically those of the old masters. Now, when I think of old master paintings, I often think of paintings that start with an earthy ground color and build up several layers of translucent paint to establish value in chroma. Some artists like Caravaggio used very dark grounds and added whites on top to create high contrast, high chiaroscuro paintings while other artists like Peter Paul Rubens used more light, yellowish grounds on which he applied translucent shadows. In my opinion, being able to use the background color to contribute to the mood or final look of the painting is a stylistic approach both techniques have in common. For skin tones, traditionally lead white or flake white was used to create soft and realistic mixtures or semi-translucent whites like fabrics against a dark background. But since I don't use any toxic paints, I had to come up with an alternative. So instead, I'm using a pigment called Barite White. Barite White is an extender pigment that's designed to add translucency. You can think of it as a mixing white or filler paint that takes on the color of the pigment it's mixed with. So when I combine it with a small amount of titanium white, for example, I can create a translucent white that mimics traditional lead white in terms of opacity. So now I have a wonderful, non-toxic alternative to lead white, and I can start building my skin color. I noticed how when I added more titanium white to the mixture and applied it to places like the bridge of the nose, I created a somewhat sculptural, three-dimensional look where the highlights tend to come forward and the darker areas recede into the background. Having a yellowish background color made my life much easier since I didn't have to separately mix darker skin tones to represent different values. I just simply let the background come through instead. I could have continued more, but here I decided I have something very similar to the reference photo. So now, I move on to the next step. For the crown, I'm going for a very loose, painterly look to represent the beaten metal surface. I'm going from light to dark, mainly because I already have my white paint mixed in front of me, and I'm going to gradually get darker towards the edges. Again, 
I'm going for a more loose, a la prima, brushstrokey look here. One thing you'll notice as I add more color is that I'm actually painting the crown green. I believe what's happening in the reference photo is that the crown is a golden yellow, but the background, being in a snowy, mountainous terrain, is casting a blue light. The yellow crown is reflecting the blue, so we get a green bias. Painting what I see and not what I know, I'm painting the crown green. I could have made a golden crown, let that layer dry, and add a blue-green glaze on top to achieve a similar effect, but I didn't want to wait for the paint to dry, and went straight with the Alla Prima direct technique. I noticed that when I added more medium or oil to the paint, the paint started to thin out and lift and expose the background. Since I wanted to achieve a dark area, that light background showing through was creating an effect I didn't want. And it's here I realized that it would have helped a lot if I had shaded the darkest areas with raw umber first when I was doing the outline sketch. Not because I don't know what value goes where on the painting, but because it would have been easier and more efficient to add dark paint to an already darkened area to achieve a deeper shade if that makes sense. I'm just blocking in the hair first and making my way towards the face. The hair and the shadows framing the face are all black, so I'm just going to get those out of the way real quick. What I'm basically doing, similar to the crown, is going from light to dark. My skin tone is already established, and that is my lightest value, so I'm going to gradually build up my color in darks in successive overlapping layers, all in one sitting. It's normal though, throughout the painting process, for the portrait to go through its ghostly phase, or ugly phase, because it's still incomplete, and you haven't blocked in all the paint or all the layers yet. So it's going to look a little bizarre, but that's normal. You have to just trust the process and keep going. If you look closely, you'll see that I have two slightly different looking red fabrics on either side of the face, and that is because I experimented once again and used two different methods when painting them. Both sides of the fabric I used a direct a la prima style, but for the first one here on the left I'm applying thick paint, either straight out of the tube or only with a very minimal amount of thinner, getting the paint straight from the palette onto the canvas. 
That's because I heard this saying once that you should get the paint on the canvas first and then move it around. So that's what I wanted to do here. The advantage of not using any thinner is supposed to be a richer color that doesn't sink in or dull over time. I noticed it was a bit difficult to spread the paint at first, especially if I don't have enough paint on my brush, but once I covered the whole area, it was easier to move the paint around or add darker shades. And again, I gradually added my darker and desaturated colors on top of a lighter base red color. It's just easier sometimes to reduce the chroma and value of an existing color than the other way around. I know a lot of artists will go from dark to light, and I do do that too sometimes, but I can also see the argument that going from dark to light can sometimes muddy the colors of your light tones, especially if you're using the same brush and paint quickly. I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing it, it's just whichever method helps you achieve what you want to create on canvas. On the right hand side, I decided to do something slightly different and add a very diluted, runny base color first, in contrast to the previous section. This is because I saw so many artists who would do a preliminary sketch with thinned out paint first, and maybe even block in some areas with a light wash of color, and then add thicker paint on top, so I wanted to see what that experience was like, and if it made any difference in the final result. So, what I'm observing is that I have a very runny paint mixture that looks very much like watercolor. It's not bad, but it's just different visually compared to the rest of the painting and the other side of the cloak. Where the left hand side has a rich and full appearance, the right hand side looks a bit weaker and streakier for lack of a better term. Applying thicker paint on top of the diluted paint didn't seem to change much. Maybe because the underlayer wasn't fully dry and it diluted the new paint, or maybe I'm using Sennelier Green for Oils brush cleaner as a thinner, which is similar but not the same as Turpentine or Gamzol, so maybe that played a role. I'm not sure, but I'm still happy I played around and experimented with this, because I really wanted to see what this method was like. We have perhaps the easiest background ever, it's just a blue and white background, and the reference photo I believe it's a snow covered mountain against a sky that's out of focus and blurred, so I'm simply going to use titanium white manganese blue hue. I did go ahead and tone the blue down just a bit with burnt umber just to reduce the chroma a bit. So just like I talked about how I painted this portrait, I want to share a little bit about the reference material and where it's from. This is originally a photo of Dave Gahan, who is the lead singer of the band Depeche Mode. This specific photo is from the scene of their music video for their 1990 hit song Enjoy the Silence. Visually, I found something about the red, gold, and blue to be very reminiscent of old paintings where these color combinations are dominantly used where you have a figure against a blue sky draped in rich fabrics. So I thought this photo had potential to be a good painting, so I went ahead and decided to paint it. If 
you guys made it this far, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot that I can share my art and experiences with people, so I get very happy when I see that others get to see and enjoy what I do. If you'd like to see more artwork, please do subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next painting video. Bye!